What's up team? Today we are talking about slope. You'll see above me the learning target. We're going to learn how to find the slope of a line when given two points or when we're given a line on a graph. Uh, right below that, you'll see the slope formula. It's given in two different ways. That should make zero sense to you right now. Uh, but by the end of this lesson, I'm hopeful that that is helpful information. First things first, what the heck is a slope? Good question. So the slope of a line tells us how steep it is, meaning the, how steep the line is. So if you see a higher number for your slope, that means it is going to be steeper. Uh, as a quick example here, if I'm going for a hike and I don't feel like working super hard, I want to go up a hill that the slope that looks like this. Or heck, even a flat hike. I'll take that all day long, right? That's not super hard to uh, traverse. Now, uh, maybe uh, I feel like working hard. I want to do some, some hill repeats. I want to get my legs strong or something like that. I'm going to go up a steeper hill. So the difference in the slope of these two lines, these two hills, is that this is much steeper. It's going to be harder, uh, more challenging to go up, and we'd say its slope is greater, or the slope is higher. Uh, in, in contrast, this one here has a lesser slope. It is less steep. In addition to steepness, uh, the slope of a line will tell us if it's a positive or a negative slope. Here's what that means. A positive slope is one that looks like this. If you read it from left to right, it is going up. When you read it from left to right, it's going up. Uh, in contrast, this one, if you read it from left to right, it's going down. So this one over here, positive slope, the one on the right, we call a negative slope. Oftentimes, uh, we see slope represented as a fraction. I know, it's our favorite F word. So uh, normally, fractions kind of make us, you know, tense up a little bit. This one shouldn't be so bad. Um, in fact, there's designated areas for where different pieces of information go. It's pretty cool. Uh, so the slope of a line is often represented as a fraction that looks like this, where the change in the y value is being divided by the change in the x value, or however much the, 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 the line moves up and down is on top, and however much the, the point moves from left to right is on the bottom. Um, again, I'm going to explain this in a little bit, but just think of it this way. The y values, the change in the y values go on top, and the change in the x values go on the bottom. Okay, here's our first example. It says, find the slope between these two points. We have the point 3, 1, and the point 5, 5. I'm going to give you four quick steps on how to find the slope of this line that goes through both points. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to name one of our points x1, y1, and the other one we're going to name x2, y2. It sounds weird, but all we're doing is making sure that we're keeping our ducks in a row. We're keeping things organized here. So we all know that when we have an ordered pair, it's always x comma y, x comma y, right? Input, output, input, output. It's always the same. So we're just going to name one of them x1, x1 comma y1. That way we can just designate one of these points as point number one, the other one is point number two. This is just a naming exercise. We're not doing any math with this particular piece. So let's say here, uh, 3, 1, that's the first point that I see. I'm going to call that x1 comma y1. And then the other point, uh, 5, 5, 5, 5, I'm going to call that one x2, y2. Again, this is just for organizational purposes. We're not doing any math with this yet. This is like uh, if we have multiple people with the same name, we want to designate by uh, giving a last initial. Step two, we're going to find the difference in the y values. So here's what that's going to look like. We are going to take the two y values, y1 and y2, and we're going to subtract them. So uh, generally, we're going to do uh, y2 minus y1. But of course, we're going to plug our, our business into this. So what this is going to look like is our y2, we said, was 5. So it's going to be 5 minus uh, whatever y1 was. So it looks like it's 1. And of course, once we have this set up, it's pretty quick to see 5 minus 1 is 4. So this is the difference in our y values. This isn't our slope. We're not done yet. We're going to use this information in a little bit, but for right now, we're just going to put it on hold. Step three here shouldn't be a surprise. We're going to find the difference in the x values. So that's going to be x2 minus x1. Let's make that happen. x2 is 5, and then we're going to subtract the x1 value, which is 3. When we do 5 minus 3, we learn that the difference in the x values is 2. Again, just like the y value, uh, that's not our slope, but we're going to use that information soon. So we're going to put it on hold for just a moment. Okay, our fourth and final step. We're going to put the differences in our fraction and then simplify. Do you remember a minute ago, two minutes ago, whatever, uh, when we wrote down that thing, change in y over change in x, and we're like, what the heck does that even mean? Well, here it is. 
the change in the y values is four for this particular uh, problem here. And the change in the x values is two. So we're gonna put them in that form there. So we're gonna have uh, our slope, we say is the change in y, which is four over two, the change in x. Let's move that over just a little bit. Four over two. And of course that can be simplified ever so uh, slightly here. So four over two is the same thing as two over one. And we can simplify that to two. So coincidentally, the change in the x values is the same value as the slope, but that is not always the case. So this here, this two here is our solution. We say that the line that goes through the point three one and the point five five has a slope of two. Okay, here's the second example. Let's say that you have a graph, uh, something like this, and you have two points plotted on the graph. We have the point one two and this other point six four, and there is a line that goes through them. And it's a perfectly straight line that looks just like this. Um, but of course, pretend that's a perfectly straight line. And you, your job here is to figure out what is the slope of this line. And you would just have the picture. Well, you also do have the coordinates of the points. So you could take these two points and follow the same four steps that we did just a moment ago, and you will absolutely find the slope. But there's a, there's a quicker way when you're given a picture, and I'm going to show you that next. This formula here is something you, you see and hear a, a lot about when we talk about slope, rise over run. It's a nice clean way to kind of remember how to find slope, uh, you know, the R's, the alliteration, that's real nice, rise over run, uh, but we need to know what this means. How do we use it? How do we implement it? What's the, what's the point, right? So if we want to find the slope between one, two and six, four, uh, we're, let's use rise over run. And uh, if you like this way, cool, use it. If you don't like this way, you don't have to use it. You can always use that, uh, the method we used just a moment ago. So here's what rise over run looks like. We're gonna start with the point that's uh, furthest to the left, the one with the smallest X value. And we're gonna work our way over to this other point that's on the right. So the way that we're gonna do that, we're first gonna see how much, how far up does this point have to travel to be at the same level as this other point over here. So it's currently the Y value is two and the Y value of our destination point is four. So that tells us we're gonna have to travel up two units. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that visual here. So we're gonna go up one, two units. So we went up two. Okay, now uh, when we say rise, that's what we mean. How far up or down do we have to go to get to our destination or to get to the same level as our destination? So notice, of course, this point right here where I ended is not the same point six four, but we now we're on equal terms in terms of Y values. Now let's do the same thing for the X values. The X values, of course, go left to right. So we're gonna find out how far our our point has to run to get to the other point here. Running just means from left to right in this context. Um, run isn't the term that we normally use in the context of math, but you know whenever I get the chance to use the word run and math together, I'm going to. So let's see how far this thing is gonna run. Uh, note the X value for the first point is one, the X value for the other point is six. Uh, we could quickly do six minus one, uh, which is five, but we can also demonstrate this visually. We can see it's gonna run one, two, three, four, five. Uh, my drawing is bad, but it went five units. So we ran five units. And uh, so the slope of this line, we're gonna take our rise value and our run value and throw it in this fraction right here. So if we rose two units, that's gonna be our numerator. And if we ran five units, that is gonna be our denominator. So for this particular uh, line here, we would say that the slope is two fifths. The key piece to rise over run is just being careful when you're counting lines, uh, counting units going up and going to the right. Additionally, uh, remember up is positive, down is negative when you're doing the rise. So up is positive, down is negative. And then when you're running, uh, when you move to the right, you move in the, the right direction, that's gonna be positive. And when you move to the left, that is negative, just like how the number line works. Okay, let's wrap things up. There's a formula that we use to find slope. All that means is somebody did a whole bunch of work on the front end of this, and we get to use their work as a big giant shortcut or like a cheat code for a video game, right? Somebody went before us hundreds of years ago and figured this out. To find the slope of a line, we just do y2 minus y1 on top, and then on bottom we do x2 minus x1, and then of course we uh, do the subtraction and simplify. So if I'm you, I would write this in big bold letters in my notebook. I'm putting stars around it because this is a big deal. 
You will use this all throughout this year. You will use it next year in geometry. You will use it in algebra two. You're gonna use this for the rest of your mathematical journeys. So the slope formula is a big deal. There are a few other kind of variations of the slope formula that I'm gonna show you next. The first variation we've already talked about, rise over run. We know how to do that. Uh, the distance that the, the thing rises or falls over the distance that the point run, has to run left or right. Sometimes you'll see it written out like this. Slope equals the change in y over the change in x. This is similar to what we started with because that's really what's happening here. We're just finding, we're just subtracting one y value from the other, and that's just finding the difference in the y values. Same is true with the x's. So this is kind of just explaining what's going on with the formula, more or less. Okay, here's our last one. Thanks for sticking with me. Another way you're gonna see the slope formula written is like this. It's got this triangle next to the y and a triangle next to x. Well, what the heck, what's that mean? Uh, so this triangle, it's, it's actually a letter. It's from the Greek alphabet. It's like pi or alpha or beta or all these other Greek characters that we use in the world of mathematics. This is another one. Its name is delta. So you're gonna see this as well. And you'll see it outside of the kind of the math world. You, you hear some nerdy people talking sometimes about, uh, about changes in numbers, changes in stock prices or things like that. And all, all it means, all delta means in this context, in the context of numbers and math is change. So it's the, this statement here, delta y over delta x is identical to this statement, change in y over change in x. It's just a little bit of a shorter way to write it. So delta means change in the world of numbers and the world of math. Sometimes you'll hear, hear people talk like, oh, hey, what, what was the, you know, the delta on what, such and such stock? Like, oh, the delta was 500 today. That means it went up 500. Um, I, I don't really use it in that context, but sometimes you'll hear it uh, outside of the context of slope. And whenever you hear delta in general, it means change. Okay, team, that's all for today. Thanks for sticking with me. Another long video. I have some more examples that I included in the notes that are, that are along with this, uh, this video. So check those out. If you have more questions, let me know. I believe in you. You got this.